my movie recollection with Vincent Cloud and John Nemitz. And this is the show where we talk about movies and they're drawn randomly. It's a fun little game show where we got to guess the movie. Um, uh, but even if you guess that movie, maybe you didn't see it. So now you have to come up with a plot and um, these are all done rather quickly. Yes, quite quickly. Yes, yes. Fact. Rather I, rapidly, rather. somewhat speedily. Uh, let's start with my movie, since I already know what it is. It's a one-word title. Revolution. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it starts with a U, as in Unabomber. <laughs> Untouchables. No, uh, no, no. Um, Utah. Morgan Freeman. Hmm. Ooh, uh, uh, Clint uh, Eastwood. Unforgiven. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. it? Yeah. Is that Clint's best movie? I think so. I keep yeah. going back to this. I haven't seen all his stuff, but this is damn good. Yeah. I'm oh. a fan. Um, Clint's uh, a loner. Living out on the the edges of society, and um, he's not alone. He's got his two kids. Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. His wife passed away. Of course, there's a dead yeah. wife. Yeah. Yeah. This must be a Nolan movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the opposite of that bombastic music is Clint Eastwood's beautiful <laughs> score. Yeah. It's a gentle little thing, like, especially that opening where it's like the opening scroll and it's like the, no one understood why this sweet woman would get with this horrible man of known to be of, you know, cruel and shit like that. They're like, why, why would she get with him and stuff? And apparently what he keeps saying is like, you know, I'm not like that anymore. You know, she changed me, but now she's yeah. dead. And like, there's all this like, reference to what his past was but he just seems like this chill old dude <laughs> yeah he seems fine i don't know <laughs> well the plot point is these two random cowboys are in town upstairs in the you know with the the, the ladies of the evening and like one of them's getting like beat up and then he tells his partner, like, he's like, hold her. And he fucking cuts her up with a knife. It's extremely, like, uneasy violence. Like, this mm -hmm. is what the movie's about. It's very anti-violent. Um, but yeah, so so then those, the ladies, they pull all this money together because they want oh, justice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, to, to put, like, a bounty out on on the heads of those guys. Yeah. Because what's his name? Oh my god, Gene Hackman is the sheriff. He didn't do shit to them. He was just like, haven't we seen enough violence, ladies? Let him go, or whatever. Or no, mm -hmm. he's like, you guys owe them six ponies, or something like that. And oh, Gene Hackman is fucking awesome. He wins the Oscar for this performance. I think it's one of my favorites of his because he plays Little Bill. He's the sheriff. Um, you know, he's not really scared of any man, but he's also very grounded in terms of the mystique of gunfighting where he's like breaking it down to the writer. Remember that? He's like, look, look at me. Uh, and he takes his gun out and pulls it at him. And he's like, that's as fast as I can draw a gun. You know, anyone mm -hmm. faster than that, you, you, you slip, it falls out of your hands, something happens. And Gene Hackman's all about kind of breaking down the mythos of of stuff, and and this movie in general is what they're right, trying yeah. to do. Like that's what the whole movie is is like kind of breaking down the western and um, reimagining the genre, I guess. Yeah, because Clint's always been you know the man with no name, just this killer or whatever. So mm -hmm. Clint's like, well, what happens when he gets older? And he's no longer that man anymore. And uh, part of that demystification of it uh, is the alcohol. He's like, I don't touch that stuff anymore. And then eventually he's like, 
alcohol was the biggest reason why I was able to do any of that stuff, you know, he, and he didn't want to drink and, you know, near the end he gets, he starts drinking again and all that evil shit that he's capable of doing starts to resurface. It's very good. Goddamn. Um, I, I thought it was awesome that the script is written by these awesome uh, writers, uh, Peoples. I think they wrote 12 Monkeys as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. They wrote this script, and Clint's like, this is very good, but I want to... He's like, I'm not old enough for it. So he just bought the script, put it in a drawer, and he was like, I want to age 10 years. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's wow. nuts. I, if uh, I was that work, writer, I guess. yeah. If, but if I was that writer, I'd be like, "Hey, motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, oh, so many good stuff. Uh, you know, you don't you you feel sorry for the cowboys. Well, you feel sorry for one cowboy because he didn't know what was happening. He but he did hold her while his partner cut her, mm -hmm. but he was very uh regretful of it you know like he tried to like he brought in a special nice pony horse for the girl and the women just throw like horse shit at him and stuff like it's crazy they they want they want them dead you know yeah oh man man i wish i could remember more of this um any any favorite scenes or people um I'm like, I'm struggling to even, even, like, how did he, how did Clint get involved? The so, Schofield like, kid. He comes, he comes in at, at uh, Clint's pig farm. It's just him and his two little, uh, his little boy and his little girl. And he's like, hey, mister, I heard you were William Money out of Missouri or something like that. He's like, I, they said you were a cold son of a bitch killer and stuff. And Clint's like, I'm not like that anymore and stuff. But he's like, well... There's a bounty, and we could split it 50, wi uh, 50 ways. <laughs> it was the Let's Wild West. Cool 2%. <laughs> um, so he he's like, you know, I need a partner. And he, he's very braggadocious, this kid. And it turns mm -hmm. out he's, like, he's never killed anyone. That, right, that later yeah. pays off. But he's just, he's like, yeah, I could shoot that thing from 50 yards or whatever. Or, like, no, it's Morgan Freeman. Who calls him out on it? He's like, "You see that hawk up there?" He's like, "Yeah, can you shoot it?" He's like, "Fuck, I could shoot two of them or something like that." <laughs> and then Morgan Freeman stops him. He's like, "There's no hawk up there, kid." Oh yeah, because yeah, I, for I forgot. Yeah, because like you couldn't really see. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Uh, shit. There's so many, so many amazing scenes. Oh, Richard Harris as English Bob. He's in this movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. He stands out so much because all of a sudden there's this <laughs> fucking British dude who's just <laughs> trashing America. Remember? Right. He's like, yep. like, anyone could kill a president <laughs> and stuff like that. It's so fucked up. But, like, it's hard to watch when uh, Gene Hackman's beating him up and in front of everyone, making an example out of him and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh my gosh, John! I wish you remembered more stuff. I feel like I, I'm doing all the work here. You, you are. Um, <laughs> yeah, like all this stuff that you bring up, I'm like, oh yeah, that was that movie too. <laughs> um, oh man, one of my favorites. I mean, like this is a solid movie, but just near the end are some of my favorite scenes. Oh, by the way, this is like one of my favorite westerns of all time easily top five for sure um but it's after they kill the last cowboy and it's uh clinton the schofield kid and they're up on this little hill and the kid's like basically breaking down he's like i've never killed anyone before and clint's like have a drink and shit like that and they're talking about like how Works crazy it is <laughs> <laughs> but like it's it's this awesome scene of them talking about killing people and what it means meanwhile the whole time there's the girl coming in with the money um from town and it's just it's so it puts this weird perspective of just how long it takes people to travel back then because they have this whole scene while she's coming up 
she shows mm-hmm. up and she's like Morgan Freeman's dead like Gene Hackman like beat him to death and that's when Clint starts drinking again and oh my god it's yeah. so good amazing ah Okay, one more thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> the very end, when Clint goes up there with the rifle, he goes into a, a, a saloon filled with hunters or people that are out to track him and kill him. And Gene Hackman's given the speech. He's like, this is what we're going to do. And and then he just noticed everyone's staring behind him. And there's Clint with, you know, all by himself. He doesn't care. He shoots the fucking... Um, the bar, t- the guy who owns the place, and then Gene Hackman just walks right up to Clint. He's like, he's got one more barrel in it. As soon as he kills me, everyone blow him the fuck away. <laughs> and Clint like just click, it misfires. Just what Gene Hacks Hackman's been talking about, like guns are not that reliable right, and shit like yeah. that. Oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, a plus, one of the one of the never mind a western, one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. It's awesome. Yeah, probably deserves a rewatch from yours truly. <laughs> Mine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's go for your movies. All right. And let's it better see. live up to that <laughs> gusto. See what we got here. Oh yeah, it does live up. I don't know if you've seen Ooh. it though. Oh, man, I feel like we've talked about it, but I don't know if it's ever actually been covered. Um. Two words. First word is the. Second word starts with A, as in Apple. The Avengers? No, it's uh, from the 50s or 60s. Um, Black and white. Shirley MacLaine. Oh, The Apartment. Yes. We've mentioned that for some reason but we never discussed the movie yeah I don't that's think. what i was thinking i don't All think right. <laughs> but we well, who's gonna call it? us on it yeah yeah really that would require a listener <laughs> 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 all right so man i i it's jack lemon right mm-hmm. yep and he's trying to get a promotion and he's he's supposed to help his boss out, and it's his boss's mistress that he runs into, like Shirley MacLaine. And she almost overdoses or something because she's depressed about the boss not leaving his his wife or something. But I yeah. just remember that's as dark as it got, but it was very light. I remember very funny. Right. Yeah, there's definitely like yeah, like the huge like suicidal stuff in there but it's still like a light-hearted comedy somehow yeah yeah like uh, she shirley mcclain's like just the elevator girl at that office building um and jack lemon takes a fancy to her um but then yeah meanwhile like she's trying to yeah break it off with his boss and he's like you know, saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to leave my wife any day now. <laughs> and um, it never happens. And then, um, yeah, and then she, um, well, the whole thing with the apartment is that basically all these executives at the company are using his apartment for their mistresses oh, right. because like he has a, it's just like in a good location and it's a nice place and um he um keeps it well stocked with like liquor and all this stuff <laughs> and his neighbors think he's like this wild like womanizer or whatever oh. um <laughs> yeah. there's this part where the the neighbor is like a doctor and like basically one set of people leaves the next set of people come in and all, all they hear it and you know they think it's him and like, <laughs> mildred he's at it again <laughs> uh, um wilder right billy wilder wrote this yeah that's right did we ever figure out if him and gene are brothers <laughs> i think or we, we talked about it i don't think we ever did any research i would not be surprised research at all. is forbidden on this <laughs> yeah <show. laughs> um but yeah this is actually one of my wife's favorite movies 
Um, Whoa. So I have, thought, well, and Willy Wonka, both possibly both. Wilder movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Wilder bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I just have to mention, first and foremost, I remember watching it and being surprised at how cute Shirley MacLaine was. I've only known her as like an older lady or whatever, yeah. you know? And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, look at you. They actually, um, on the Criterion app, they had like a Shirley MacLaine series like a few months ago. And like, I just developed a huge crush on like young Shirley MacLaine. Uh, uh, anything else she she's in? Um, she's in that um, Bob Fosse musical, Sweet Charity. Mm. I love that movie. Um, and there was another one that she was like hot in. And I, I can't remember what it was called, but like the movie was that she basically like um, had like all these different husbands throughout the movie and they ended up dying but like she always like married they were like just these like um like lazy but fun men but then like somehow they all became like obsessed with their work and making a ton of money and stuff and um like, it's like a weird farcical movie but i i enjoyed it quite a bit i wish i could remember what it was called but uh that should be a future love possibly uh movie crushes cuz i i got into that deep during COVID, because I'm like, well, let me go back and watch movies like I used to. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit, Phoebe Cates, Winona Ryder, like all these old crushes where I'm like, oh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Oh, Winona Ryder, I just watched Heathers. I'd never seen that before. I want to watch it. It's queued up in my uh, Shudder app. Uh, Shudder to think you haven't <laughs> seen it yet. <laughs> uh yeah just very clever movie uh does it end is there like a memorable ending for some yeah, reason yeah like it all it all builds up to uh like a new year's eve and there's like parties going on and like um he's kind of uh jack lemon at this point is just kind of sick of this shit and he like is ready to move out of his apartment and then um meanwhile the boss's wife like he he had also cheated on her with his old secretary and she told her wife her his wife that this was all happening so he got kicked out of the house and like you know she the wife was gonna leave him so now he's like actually supposedly gonna really be more serious with shirley mclean but then she dumps him at the New Year's Eve party and goes to see Jack Lemon, and they they finish their game of cards that they started, and she was at his house. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, also a young Jack Lemon. I only known him as gr you know grumpy old men, so that was kind of interesting. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that was yeah. This is probably the first movie where I saw him. As a young man, although I might have seen like the original Odd Couple, um, now that I think about it, but oh, right, that's like with Walter Matthau, right? Yeah, uh, I th this movie won o o Oscars, I think it won Best Picture for sure, and I think Shirley MacLaine either won or was nominated as uh, and director, writing, like, yeah, this was a big hit in its day, and yeah. I think it's still still slaps do the kids say that anymore <laughs> did they ever say it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i only ever heard it and said uh it slaps as the kids say but i've never heard a kid say it right yeah me neither okay uh new movie new movie i will press shuffle on my handy dandy letterboxed account as soon as i can Get out of these fucking ads. Oh, this website's ter terrible. <laughs> All right. Ter terrible. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's a two-word title. Uh, first word starts with an S, and the second word is a number. Oh. Um, does that mean it's a sequel? 
Not gonna tell Spider-Man you. Two. Spider-Man Three. Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man Two. Um. Oh, J.J. Abrams. Oh. J.J. Abrams Super Eight. Hmm. Yeah, I saw this long ago enough that I don't remember it. It's like kid with a camera. <laughs> um, was it like a like an eighties nostalgia movie? Yeah, yeah. Like r- a couple of years before Stranger Things, for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't really remember what happens. I feel like there's train tracks involved. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah, it's a big action scene that that crash because that releases the monster. Remember? Yeah. Oops. Um. Yeah, you don't. Do you remember how they intertwine? What happens? Any characters stand out? Nope. You know what? <laughs> this movie isn't the best. Hate, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hate to say it, but no, like just these like vague images are coming to mind. I don't, I couldn't tell you a single person in it. It's, it's uh, my. Oh, first of all, let me just say this: J.J. Abrams, I've, I have yet to really love. Like, I enjoyed Star Trek on my second view. You know his version of it, <laughs> but like, he just he all he does is remake shit. You know, I, he's not a, a very original voice. Um, and I have my complaints about like Tarantino for that same reason and stuff. Um, he shouldn't write. He should just direct, if anything. But anyways, this is a ripoff of uh, E.T., uh, uh, It, a little bit. You know, because you have the kids, they're on bikes and they're, you know, they're trying to make a movie. They're, you know, trying to record yeah. stuff. That I could identify, right, John? You and I would yeah, run around and yeah. That's all um, I ever did. Yeah. Uh oh, but it changes because there's like a new girl in town. She's um what's her name's sister? Uh whatever. Um, and she's like, Oh, I can act. And they're like, Are you sure? So like they bring her in and you know, they make all these cheesy movies, but like the guy's like, All right, listen, you gotta do this. And the character's supposed to be sad. And she puts on like this amazing performance <laughs> that's like so <laughs> dramatic and right. They're like, Whoa, <laughs> like we you know, you don't have to do that much for our stupid movies, you know? But that's right when uh that train crashes and then some monster gets away. But it's so weird, like is it magical like et no it's they treat it like it's magical but all he's doing is eating people so that just doesn't work he tries to put whimsical like wonder like spielberg but it's just not working i just ugh, do not care for this i don't know i found it to be quite forgettable I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember specifically thinking, like, I'm gonna forget this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes the last scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, new movie, eh? Was JJ? Oh. He did Lost, right? Y- yeah, yeah. Did you watch or like that? I did watch it. I did like it at a point. And then I started to notice, like, oh, the, they don't know what they're doing. This is just <laughs> fucking shock, surprise for the sake of that. They have no idea where they're going. And they even admitted it. So after a while, I, I stopped. I couldn't stand it. As yeah. a writer, as someone who wanted to be a, be a writer and knows the structures and rules, I hated that show. I'm like, oh, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, just check it. <laughs> the blood pressure, John. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got here. Oh, um, five word title. First word starts with H, as in hotel. How to train your dragon? Uh, you got the first word right. It's, uh, oh, I don't know, probably around 2010. Um, it's a remake. Uh, okay. hmm. 
It's a holiday movie of sorts. How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Yes. Which one? The Jim Carrey one. All right. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, you watched it? I mean, yeah, you watched it. Apparently. <laughs> well, did I say 2010? Not more like 10,000. I mean, 2,000. <laughs> more like, more like 8,000 years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well i it's it's so weird like this movie's i i liked it it's weird prosthetics to create the who's and the, yeah. the grinch um and of course the acting is is hyper unrealistic like the who's are always like huh They're like super <laughs> like bright and cheery and like oh and stuff like that and meanwhile the grinch is just jim carrey being able to do whatever he wants but I think he's effective. I, I I think this is his last performance that I was like, yeah, Jim, you still got it. Like, I really <laughs> liked him in this movie. Yeah. Um, I, the, like the short little, like 20 minute, 30 minute cartoon one was like one of my, probably my favorite Christmas movie growing up with yeah. the, the song and you're a monster. <laughs> Mr. Grinch. <laughs> what was the one? Was like choosing between you and the whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. The great like songs. A, yeah, like that angry crocodile. Oh yeah, like seasick <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when he's slithering over you know, around the <laughs> tree is awesome. Yeah. And Max. So, so this movie is you know that story but it's stretched out a little bit they go into his past i guess the grinch went to school with them and there's like this traumatic thing where he remembered he wanted to try and shave but he like cut himself really bad and then everyone made fun of him um it's that one dude the dad from arrested development He's oh, yeah, Jeffrey kind of, Tambor. Yeah, Jeffrey Tambor is like kind of like the bully, and now he's grown up. He's the mayor, I think. Something like that. The mayor of Whoville. Yeah. Uh, little uh, Lady Lou Who? Or... Cindy Lou Who? Cindy Lou More than two. <laughs> She's a little bit older in this <laughs> in this one. But she was nice. She was a, you know, I believed... I, I think this movie really captured... Uh, the essence of that cartoon. I don't know if I've ever read the book, actually. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have not. I was more of a hop on pop guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was more of a green eggs and ham <laughs> fellow myself. I was also more of a, what was it, Yertle the Turtle? Where the, all those turtles stack on each other. Remember that one? Kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, Yertle does rhyme with turtle. I'll, I'll give you that much. And then what was the one? Oh, my gosh. What a tangent. But what was the one where they go to war with each other because one butters their bread on the bottom and one on the top? Oh. Um, hmm. It was about, like, how stupid war is and yeah. shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember that. Yeah. There was there was also the the movie or the show with the sneeches where like they had different amount of stars on their bellies or something. And then yeah. they like went through a machine to have either stars painted on or stars <laughs> taken off. And um oh man, so much good. Um, oh wow! Dr. I Seuss stuff. completely forgot what movie we're even talking about here. <laughs> oh no! Um, 2000 Ron Howard picture. How the Grinch right. stole Christmas. Ron Howard. It's so weird that they some people give him shit for being too safe or something, but but I'm like I don't know. He's serviceable. Like he doesn't. I don't think he ever takes away from anything. Yeah, I I see him as like very capable and he always he always does a good job but you know he doesn't have like the the auteur vision or whatever yeah, like, yeah. Right. You, you never see a movie and like oh that's clearly a ron howard movie you know what i mean 
Mm-hmm. But like he has a lot of good movies. Willow. Apollo 13. Uh, uh, a Beautiful Mind. <laughs> <laughs> the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Clint Howard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, damn. Uh, oh, I, I remember I, I like the um, this one woman. It's got this crazy contraption where it's shooting um, Christmas lights onto the roof. That was pretty oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I like that one. What do you think, uh, Vince? Would you want to live in Who Town, Whoville? Whoville, it seems, USA? It seems nice. Although, do they do they accept people that look different from them? Because look how they <laughs> treated the Grinch. <laughs> I'd be up there on that hill. <laughs> yeah, you'd make a good Grinch. <laughs> Oh, and Max. Max is so cute. Love that dog. Is Whoville always ready for Christmas? Or have we only seen it in, in this little period of time? Ooh, that'd be interesting. Like, Whoville do, in spring. Yeah, do Whovilles get this into Easter as well? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That'd be cool. You know what? The Grinch and Jack Skellington should make a movie together <laughs> they just go fuck up all the holidays and stuff. <laughs> that'd be awesome i mean oh you should do a meme where it's like a green grinch arm and then like a bony jack skellington arm clasping together wolverine and, and deadpool <laughs> sort of poster oh i was thinking the um from predator uh, predator yeah <laughs> yeah and then it's like both like impersonating santa claus or something like that <laughs> oh that's awesome um hmm. oh there's this awesome part where he's he's invited to go down and do something with the who's but he's in the ca- his cave, and he's he's like he's not sure if he wants to do it or whatever. And he like tries to put on clothes, and like ooh, ah. he's like looking at himself <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going and shit like that. Uh, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, very very good. We've we've been wow, Super Eight sucked. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say all these <laughs> movies so special. Um, should we move on? Did you Unless actually you got... write them down for in preparation for the the lower lightning round? Yeah, not the lightning <laughs> lower hour as you wrote. <laughs> We're like it's not an hour. A lot of the poor kids. <laughs> yeah, and then I listened to the episode. And I'm like, oh yeah, he was only there for like <laughs> ten seconds. <laughs> so his computer crashed. <laughs> All right. Um, new movie. New. Movie. Is it? Oh, it's, it's it's me here. Let me just press Shafalophagus. Oh my god, these fucking ads. These ads, brah. All right. Ooh. Okay, a one word title. I don't think we talked about this. One word title starts with an H, as in haberdashery. Um. Hmm. The happening. Would not count. No. Um, ooh, not um, Sean Connery. Okay. Hmm. Oh man, what's his ooh. fucking name? Oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> ha- Halloween Sean Connery style. <laughs> um. <laughs> Christopher Lambert. Uh, Wait, we did talk about the Highlander. Four. We talked about Hi- Highlander four. Oh, I see. And yeah. this is Highlander the first. Yes, it oh, okay. is. Yeah, correct. All right. Um, oh, I don't think I ever actually watched Highlander. Um, but I think... It's about Sean Connery, who is the Spaniard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> where the so many movies is, like, <laughs> where that he's been in where he's supposed to be like an American or whatever and he has his Scottish accent and he's finally in a movie called The Highlander and he plays the Spaniard yeah um, and then and then the character who's the Highlander is you know who's supposed to be Scottish is played by a French man <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. But yeah, we've got these immortals, and um, they all apparently feed off the same energy source or something, and I don't know. Maybe that's why there can only be one. Um, and some of the these immortals are using their power for evil, and our our hero Christophe Lambert is going around putting a stop to all the the evil immortals by slicing their friggin' heads off with a sword, and then lightning comes down and he gains their power and gets stronger. And so here's a question: um, when when uh, an immortal kills another one? Does that the one who did the killing get all their power, or does the the power kind of you know get split fifty ways amongst the <laughs> all the the remaining immortals? Nope it it goes directly to the killer. Okay. So so then some immortals are leveling up like crazy, you know? Yeah. Uh, and they don't really have any powers outside of just not dying. You know, like they can, you could do anything to them, but if you cut their head off, then I don't remember if a mortal has to kill another immortal or if you could just get your head cut off. It might be just head cut off. Does, by doesn't anyone? matter by who. Yeah, I think so. But they, like a, you know. Like a factory accident. <laughs> could do them in. Yeah. And then like the, the shop foreman gains his immortal power. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's the concept of the movie, but you have in its inner cut, it's like during the eighties for Christopher Lambert, but he's like remembering all, all the times like in the, you know, when he's supposed to have this duel with someone and they just, keep stabbing themselves but they can't die like it's almost like a joke it's really weird but it's funny and yeah you see lambert kind of like people he's known throughout his life and that's all all that stuff is really fun and sean connery he's a he's a cool uh dude to be you know being taught to to train under or whatever but then the dude the the main bad guy it's like something brown. Clancy Brown. Yeah, that's him. He's this big guy. He has a fucking awesome bad guy voice. And yeah, he's just going around just lopping all the immortals' heads off and just getting super souped up and stuff like that. He's also the one that kills Sean Connery. So he gets all of Sean Connery's powers too. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. How how long of a time period does the movie cover? Do we get to see them back in medieval times or Roman times or that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's it's all interwoven with the the modern stuff. The oh, modern stuff, yeah. The modern stuff is okay. It's probably the least interesting part of it because it's just the reporter slowly like, oh, I think he's an immortal, even though, you know, the whole time we're like, yeah, he's an immortal. We're watching it. It just takes her a while to put all the pieces together and then get the cop's attention. And yeah, that's not, it's not as good as all the flashbacks. All the flashback stuff is really solid. When was this made about? Um, I could look. 80, let's see, 86. Okay, so the modern stuff is all mid eighties. Yep. All yep. like cocaine and Wall Street deals and Yeah. Yeah, I don't re I don't remember too much. But anyways. Synth pop. 
<laughs> synth pop, yes. Um, I'm now I'm trying to think of a synth pop band. Nothing's coming to mind. Uh, D Devo, they they were synth pop now. I know, but yeah, I'll take it. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, but no, it's funny because the whole thing—it's like, oh, there could only be one immortal and stuff, and they will. I don't even know what happens when when there's just one because it doesn't matter in the second one or the third one or the fourth one. <laughs> they just they they just redial the the clocks back or just ignore stuff. Like continuity be damned. It's so weird. It's a very bizarre franchise, but overall pretty good. I like it. Yeah, for making the assertion that there can be only one, <laughs> they spend a lot of time with more than one. <laughs> yes. Um yeah, that's about it, I guess. I mean, do we hope and pray that Dave shows up within a couple minutes? Do you uh, have a... Highly unlikely. Um, reshoot or something? Maybe. I, did we did we talk about the one of the Matrix sequels in the past? Yeah, Revolutions. Revolutions, the okay. I just, um, I just rewatched the the second and third um reloaded and revolutions for the first time since like the year they came out wow. and i actually enjoyed them a lot like um i was invested in like what happens in the the real world and all that stuff and i was still quite confused and <laughs> <laughs> don't understand a lot but um i i I enjoyed them way more than I expected to having just kind of my memory of the first time watching them. Um, that's fine. But I'm wondering though, did you not watch the first one? You just went to two and three. Um, I, I didn't watch the first rewatch the first one just now, but I, I watched it like a year or so ago. Because that was my theory. I'm like, I don't think you would have enjoyed them after if just I... <laughs> watching the first one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the key. You got to watch the first one recent enough that you, rem you, you can remember what happened and what's important. But then it's not so fresh that you're comparing it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because I'm sure, um, right, you would enjoy Godfather Part 3. If it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I almost want to say the Matrix movies could be a future hate just because I hate the dialogue. I hate their overall idea of where, where it's like, you know, and it feeds into so many conspiracy theories, theorists' heads where it's like, this isn't reality. No, this is a simulation. It's yeah. like so many people cannot accept reality. It's so crazy. Yeah, and then like the whole red pill thing in the real world, like people using it as like, oh, I'm so much smarter than you because I believe <laughs> yeah. all this conspiracy bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, are you present? What's up? Oh my yes. gosh. Are we talking about the Matrix? Yeah. It's a reshoot to the Matrix Revolutions. Uh Anything to add? Have you seen it since? Is that the second one or the third, third one? The third one? I don't really have anything to add to it. Like the first movie was great. The second movie was okay, and the third <laughs> one was just bad. All right. Well, you might have just gotten a little taste of the lower <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> All right. Uh okay, lightning okay. hour, if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Maybe no, if that's... you cut Maybe if you make a compilation of all his appearances, <laughs> you might have an hour on you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dave, here's the first movie. Unforgiven. I've sadly never seen it, and it's always been at the top of my must-see movies. Dude, totally. I just, I just said in this video that not only is it one of the best westerns, but just overall all great movies. I love this movie. So good. All right. Uh, have you seen The Apartment? No. No idea what that is. <laughs> have you been on the apartment internet from the uh, Jeff Goldblum commercial? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the movie Super 8? Is that the Cloverfield type movie? Yeah, it's it's Abrams. Did he make Cloverfield? I don't remember anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it was like it was kind of like Stranger Things before Stranger Things, mm -hmm. where it was like kids with like a VHS camcorder, and it was like a. I think it was supposed to be in the same universe as like the Cloverfield movie, I think, or something. Oh, interesting. I think there's. I think Abrams put in Easter eggs or something in the movie that were kind of tying them together. Mystery yeah, boxes. Movie. Yeah, you liked it. I did like it. I mean, I think I saw it in theaters or something. So I, I liked it, but like, I didn't like love it. Like, I've never seen it again. I just saw it the one time. Yeah. Well, you you like Abrams, don't you? You're a lost boy. You vampire. I like <laughs> Lost, but I don't. I don't know. It's. I thought I liked Abrams when I was watching Lost at first, but he's continuously let me down over the last <laughs> twenty years. So no, I don't like Abrams anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, have you seen the movie How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Animated? Uh, Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah. I love... It's one of my favorite Jim Carrey movies, actually. It's it's one of the few Christmas movies that I really enjoy watching, and I will watch every year. Um, he's awesome in it. Jim Carrey is so good in that movie. And even, like, yeah. the little Who's in Whoville, they're all <laughs> awesome. Like, little Cindy Lou Who... And then, oh, I love the little baby Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> this is the cutest little <laughs> green character ever. <laughs> That's right. Okay. The um, original baby Yoda. Yes. Yeah, really? <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Uh, and then finally, Highlander. Never seen it. Do you, uh, you uh, heard about it, at least? I've heard the name, but I was it like originally a TV show? Or no, was it originally like an '80s movie? It was an '80s movie. It's a franchise now, but like, uh, there was a TV show like in the '90s. But dude, I'd say check this one out. This is this is the re there's a reason why there's a show and like three other movies. This movie is pretty sweet. You like '80s action where like people are cutting each other's heads off with swords. Okay, this movie might be for you. <laughs> <laughs> say more. <laughs> uh, Sean Connery plays a Spanish <laughs> what is it a Spaniard the Spaniard yeah alright well that, yeah you talked me into it I want to see that <laughs> yeah it, I think it's one of those uh, staples of the 80s I think it's a it's a good good movie to check out alright well that was it that's the end of the light <laughs> the, the lightning lower hour <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, subscribe, comment uh, Go to mymoviorecollection.com uh, I was Vincent Cloud I was John Nemitz And I was David Lauer